Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and the 2022 Toyota Tundra was unveiled last Sunday, and since then there's been a lot of conversation on this new truck, being the hybrid portion of this truck, doesn't come with the onboard generator feature that the Ford F50 did. And there's a lot of conversation about why, why not, and it should have or should not have, because we hear a lot from people on this channel who comment to say, the power on board's a gimmick, or the power on board's a light game changer. So there's a lot of controversy about that. I thought, let's do a video and talk about what's gonna come in the new Tundra. And I happen to have a 2021 Toyota Tacoma here that happens to have the same plug that's in the Tundra, and I think a pretty similar setup. So in this video, I'm gonna go, let's run some power tools. Let's talk about what they thought, what Toyota said as far as why they didn't put it on there. Run the power tools, talk about that. I'll talk about my use cases for them. We'll talk about some other stuff that, well, maybe get you thinking. So let's go and get started on all that right now. Okay, let's kick this off by talking about what the Tacoma has, which is what the Tundra will have, and also explaining that if you're new to the channel, welcome. I used to own a power boost to like a month ago. I had a 7.2 kilowatt onboard generator. Lots of videos on that. Check those out as well. And I use that feature quite a bit. So it's kind of cool. I have experienced that feature as a homeowner. And now I can talk to you guys about it on new Tundra. So this truck, this Tacoma, has a 110 hookup that has 400 watts. That is the same hookup that is in the Tundra. They're the same. Now how this system works is going to be right over here. Inside the truck, we have actually two power switches here in the Tacoma. We have a 400 watt and we have a 120 volt, then we have a 100 watt. You can actually press this twice and reduce the wattage going to it. Now to run this system, you have to take the handy dandy key, which I legit have a key, which is interesting. Hop in, foot on the brake, turn it over, and then press this button. All right, sorry, I'm not sure where that cut out. I know when I turned on the truck, it, the app started for the Intune system, but anyways. So you turn on the truck, right? And then you press this button. 400 watts for once, 100 watts for twice. Actually, you can downgrade the watts. A Little hard to tell because of the way the sun's shining, but I did press that button. And there's no not notification on the screen at all, which is a little frustrating. I wish it would tell me that the button's on. And unlike the Ford system that uses the um, their what they call it, the Sync 4 or Sync 5, the system pops up and you can press a button and turn it on the outlets in the back and know how much power is going to them. You also do it on your cell phone too, which is pretty convenient. In this setup, yeah, as long as that light's on, uh, that's the only way I know that I have power. So let's go check it out back here. Okay, now one of the things in the Tundra that we talked with Mike Spears about was about that onboard generator and why he didn't. And he told the story, he went to talk to his construction buddies and contractors and asked them what do they really need from power from a truck. And they all told him 400 watts was fine because they're, what they're doing as contractors is they're using a lot of battery operated equipment, they're carrying generators with them, or they're set up for a job site that has power on the job site. So they don't really have a need for the power on board the truck, which is true today. I'm going to show you a video right now because I actually just said True Green pull up and talk to you about what they're doing for the system and why, and then I'll come back and tell you more thoughts. And what do you know, timing is everything. That's True Green. I pay them to spray my front yard. As you can hear, he's got a compressor running. So as soon as he got out of the truck, he flicked the switch, started the compressor, and he's going to run that, run water with this spray on top of the grass. Now that's the way the game has been played for like companies like True Green for a long time. That's your setup. A truck like the Ford F-150 with a power boost or an onboard generator like the Tundra could have had might have changed the way that game is played. He might be able to use the truck's power now instead of carrying an extra piece of equipment. They might have changed the way the equipment was built. They may have changed their entire system. Who knows? It's, my point here is, is that's what the game is today. It's not what the game could be in the future. Okay, so, you know, that's True Green. They got a system set up. They're like any contractor. You know, they understand that the game is played this way. And, and go with me a little bit as far as how I'm going to use the term the game. Well, the game is played that contractors know at a job site that they may not have adequate power. So they bring their own power supplies or they bring a, batter, a bunch of battery-powered equipment. Like I have my battery-powered drill, right? And so they bring a lot of cordless equipment to do the job to know because they know that's how the game's played. The thing with the onboard generator that's interesting is it's creating another variable in the game. And so it's giving them the option to have power on the job site in a different way, 
which may or may not change the way to do business over long term. I would have much rather seen Mike give like those guys a, a truck, a prototype, with the power on board for like a month and seeing how does that change things. The other thing I think that's interesting with what his approach is is that Toyota doesn't do much with fleet sales, like at all. Like they really don't care about fleet sales. So that contractor is really not target customer. You know who is? I am. Yeah, I sit at these press conferences and people are like, we talked to our customer. And I'm like, did you talk to me? Because I buy trucks. The average person who buys trucks, the age group between 40 to 65, and is a male and homeowner, that's all me. I, I bought the Ford. I'm, I'm probably going to buy the Tundra, the non, non-hybrid, because I can't get the hybrid, um, because people have spoken. I need to get the, the non-hybrid. But I'm the target customer. And how I use a truck is different than what contractor uses a truck. Let me show you my equipment. Okay, now let's talk about the equipment I have here. So this is my typical homeowner equipment, and I think a lot of you guys feel the same equipment. Uh, and there's a reason why I do things a certain way. So I have a cordless drill. This is the only piece of equipment that I have that's cordless, that's battery powered. And the reason for that is I use this drill all the time. I know I consistently use it once a month, and when I'm building something, like I just got done building a shed, I know I'm gonna use it quite a bit. So I can charge this 20 volt battery up, and I'm gonna use the battery and deplete the battery and charge it up, which is good battery usage, and I know that I'm gonna use this all the time. So I'm not gonna worry about a, bad, a dead battery with this. However, my saws, I have a compound miter saw, I have a circular saw, I have a sawzall, I have a, a hammer drill, any of those pieces of equipment that I don't really use very often, I like to go corded. And the reason for that is I don't wanna pull off the shelf and the battery's dead or have to charge or whatever. Typically, when I need to use a saw, I need to use it. And I don't have time to chase around dead batteries or buy new batteries. And batteries can be really expensive. And plus, the prices are lower. So I'd rather buy corded when I do things that I'm not going to use all the time. So that's my kind of setup here. And so I think most consumers have a mix of corded equipment and cordless equipment. Now, most times you're working on a job, especially around the house. Like I have a trailer that's full of wood that I needed to chop up to put into my firewood box I just built. You're going to run an extension cord. So in this case, I have an extension cable going to the house at 50 foot, so I have to, whenever I do a job, I need to plan ahead and bring <laughs> my damage, but plan ahead and bring my extension cord with me because it's part of the equipment I would take. So is it a pain in the butt to plug it in? No, I get to go find a cord at 50 foot. It's not that big of a deal. But when I had the F-50 with the onboard generator, it was a lot more convenient to just plug in my drill and, or plug in my saw and start sawing. Now this truck, interestingly enough, will run a saw. But let me show you the difference. Let me do a little demonstration. Grab my safety glasses. I'm gonna plug in my saw to the power in the house. I'm gonna cut this two by four, and I'm gonna show you the same saw trying to cut from 400 watts of power. It's quite the difference. Okay, make sure I get all my safety gear on, glasses, gloves, do all the right things. So I have a two by four, and let's say I'm just gonna cut this down a little bit. I am plugged in to the house. Pretty easy, pretty simple. Now, let's plug in the truck. Plugged in the truck. Not so simple. All right, now the other thing I have to do is I have to always make sure the truck is running the whole time I have that power plugged in. And with the hybrid version, the power boost, it would actually cycle on and off to charge the battery, which would fill the inverter to plug. So you didn't have to run that thing all the time. It didn't idle all the time. In this case, I need to idle this truck all the time. And so, yeah, it, it's a demonstration that kind of shows how weak the power plug is, sure. And does it depend on your usage? Absolutely. Like, I can just run a cord, done, simple solution. But what I'm telling you is that power on board is there's multiple things. So like, for example, we went camping with it. And this is the big kicker for me is we went camping with the, the power on board and it created a bunch of new uh, parameters, if you will, for the game. I ran the truck uh, like a kind of a boondocking scenario where I ran it for like an hour with AC on full blast just running off the truck. So it gave me the option too. When we go tent camping. It would have been great to have that because my wife is deaf. She has implants she needs to charge overnight. It's nice to have that power there. And that truck was so quiet, I could let it run all night and it wouldn't even wake me up in a tent. So there's some 
things there that expand the parameters of what the game is currently played. And I think that's the big thing with onboard generators, is it expands what the truck is used, so the tool is more useful. Another scenario that is pretty useful is I should legitimately have the power go out while I own the truck. And so I was able to run that extension cord inside the house with these ends and plug in a couple lights and a space heater and keep us warm while the power was out. Uh, you can also do an adapter on the side of the house that goes down to your breaker box and you actually can power quite a bit of appliances. Some appliances power in the house, I would say quite a bit. You can, you can, you can provide power to the house for key appliances. So like what happened in Texas this last spring where they had a bunch of freeze come through and destroyed a bunch of houses because the, po the water lines froze, so they lost power several days. With that power on board truck, you could have actually run power to your breaker panel. You could have done the old ragneck thing and plugged into the dryer vent uh, core, or dryer outlet and ran power to the house because you had 220 and you would have 7,200 watts of power in that house and you actually just saved some of those homes, which is what actually happened. If you watch the news, the Ford actually sent some power boost down there with the power on board to help people out and provide power. In this case, I really can't do that that much. And I think that that is one of the overarching questions with this truck is that, yeah, I mean, a lot of times you see comments below where people are going to say it's a gimmick, it's a, you don't need it, you know, just run a generator. Well, especially in a truck this size, right, and even the Tundra, um, uh, carrying a generator around is one more thing I got to haul, it's one more thing I got to toss in, one more thing I got to maintain, one more thing I got to carry gas for. It's just super convenient to plug it in there. And I think that's where a benefit of that truck versus the other generator option was going to be. With the Tundra, you don't have that choice. So what you're going to do is you're going to have to always plan ahead and currently where the game is played. And what I find fascinating about this whole conversation is that really, Toyota doesn't update their trucks very often at all, right? So you could argue once every 15 years they update their trucks. And so what my concern is, is that say my, my kid is 12 right now, when he turns 27 and he's gonna buy his first truck, with Ford doing onboard generator, and you sh probably Chevy's gonna do it, and Ram's gonna do it, because you know they are gonna future-proof their truck and try to get more people in there, is that term there, future-proof, right? I think if my son is 27, maybe 30, he may not know a time in his life when trucks didn't come with onboard generators. He may just take it for granted, like we do, right? So we know trucks these days come with power plugs in the back. So now we sometimes we take that for granted because, well, my 62, if he was here, he doesn't have any sort of power at all. <laughs> so I think that, you know, when you're changing a truck every 15 years, you definitely have to future-proof it. And by not taking that technology, it seemed like it was kind of a, a no-brainer for a lot of truck guys, and putting it as an option on your truck at least, even just an option, I really think that there's a, a missed opportunity there to really get more customers involved and more customers excited. And with the future growth of overlanding and boondocking being a th big thing, more people buying trucks and going off-road and going off-road camping and living off the grid and off-the-grid lifestyle becoming such a big thing, I just, I feel like it's a missed opportunity. But hey, let me know what you think. Put your comments down below. I'll check this other video out over here. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you down the road.